Ministry. That's all it takes. Not enough scouting. He did see where the Stalkers were. They were in a weird position. Maybe he didn't see what, that, what happened to that Marine. That's one way to look at it. Like, maybe he just wasn't looking. And it's like, didn't see it died to Stalkers. I don't know. But still, big mistake. If he had just stayed on two base and just kept making a... Made more of a, a, big, a bigger, better buyer and just kept upgrading, kept making medivacs to deal with this cl uh, stalker composition that wasn't going to change. Right. You, you don't have to attack anytime. You don't soon. have to drop. You keep those wood mines at home. Yeah. You, uh, you just keep stimming, you know, and defending with those mm. extra medivacs, that extra healing that you have. Mm. And uh, I think he just thought, oh, Class is going to try to transition for sure. But he's got a late robo. Let's see what this drop does. If he's got any stragglers out on the map, I'm going to pick those off. I'm going to control where he is on the middle of the map. Keep him away from me, and I'm going to drop and keep him just move back towards his base. I've got a better economy. I could take the third base. I think that was kind of the plan, the kind of the push out there. I'm going to yeah. take control of this map, but he I walked so. into a trap. Basically. He did walk into a huge trap. I'm sure he was not expecting to be at a warp prison with four sentries with a massive blink stalker uh, all in continued. So. I mean, that's 400 gas committed to the sentries. Yeah. If that doesn't go off, I mean, that's so much of a commitment. The stalkers could be easily defended if he's got a lot of units back mm. in the main. Time for that final map, King Sejong Station. The classic TVP map. Just a classic two-player great map for all matchups. It's a fantastic map. One of the best maps uh, of this map pool. I, it's, been I my, it's been my favorite. Makes for some really interesting games, especially in TVP. We have seen Terran have a little bit more success on this map as well in recent times, learning how to just be a little bit more aggressive with the uh, fire mines, etc. All right, Moonglade, it's time. The final map, the fifth map here in this PBT to decide who's going on to the main tournament. The bottom right in red. It's classic for SKT. Started off 0-2 in this series. It's brought it back all the way to the fifth game. Very focused. Not Back in it. Cool. Yeah, he's looking a lot better now. A lot less frustrated. He knows he has to win this game. Yeah. And his opponent to the top left. It's Cure. Pulling out two really unique strategies back to back. Bonus tracks. And before that, a proxy factory into a proxy Widowmine drop. Yeah, he's looking for that gimmicky win. Not going to find it though. Classic seems to be too well versed in that sort of situation. This map is a map we actually see a ton of proxy play on from mm. the Terran, but we see a lot of proxy Stargates as well. Yeah, this is true. It's a really good map for proxies because there's so many different locations to hide things where you're still pretty close to your opponent's base by air. I think Kira's going to play it standard, though. I, think I feel like... See, uh, I think we might see both and play pretty standard, to be honest. Uh, in this sort of situation... It's your last life. It's your last life. Do you want to really risk it all on some crazy all-in? No. No, you don't, Wolf. They both say no. Look I at this. say no. I say no. I'd never do it. People know my strategy by now. <laughs> Like, I'm like never going to do it. Barracks and the gate go up, so yeah. they're showing us already they want to play this pretty standard, pretty straight up. Well, Reaper opening on this map only makes sense. It's the same as uh, Catalina. I mean, like, you can have you have that back door to get in. You can uh, get a good scout off with the Reaper, as we saw Cura do in that game to kind of win him the game. Yeah. The game-winning scout. There's nope. that pile on at that back door. Yeah, just making sure that he knows if there's any proxies like right there when they're coming. And also spot the Reaper, jump on that lip like we talked about in game one. If you have the pile on to spot the Reaper coming in, you could just get your units over there so much faster during that extra second where he has to jump up that second time. Never heard it being called a lip before. I kind of like it. Uh, some people call it the chin. I think Artosis calls it uh, the chin. The dimple, perhaps. The dimple, the dimple it could be. Uh, could be the dimple of the cliff, I guess. The monobrow. Could be an outcrop. Outcrop? Yeah. Yeah. Plateau. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. That's about, I think that's about the possibilities. I think we kind of map them out. Yeah. Okay. We'll stick to lip for now. Sure. So we, we figure something out. It's going to be that Reaper expand. Yep. Reactor, CC, everything lining up exactly as you'd expect it. Zealot cancel as he sees the SCB move past. Doesn't need it anymore. Nexus plan at the perfect time. These builds are straight up as, you know, textbook as it gets. Mm. Following them by the book, no mistime. I mean, you even saw the, the way that probe moved. He was at the Nexus building location at exactly 400 minerals. Very well practiced. Good scout on that third pylon. He knows exactly where to check for tech later on with his Reaper. That's actually, that's pretty interesting. We see the Reaper uh, built on the reactor. 
Yeah, he actually delays the Reaper to get a faster CC and a faster reaction. So there's a little bit of originality right right there, you know? A little bit different, Wolf. Yeah. Uh, I've seen Flash do this, like, ever so often. Very, very rarely, though. Pretty unique opening here. Going into the three barracks follow-up, though. I guess you get that extra Marine just a little bit sooner. Yeah, and you get your reactor up just so you could get that production going, get that flowing. Gonna go into that three racks play again. We did see him do very, very well with it against the uh, the Blink Stalker play from Classic. Ooh, game speaking two. of Blink Stalkers, speaking of Classic's also really shown that he loves to mothership for scout in this matchup. He's gonna do it again here. He's really confident with that. He saw a late Reaper. He knew there was no Reaper in his main. He's already got the Stalker out, so doesn't have to worry about that Reaper coming into his base and doing damage. And you must be thinking, you know, at this point, it's not really even a a Reaper build because you know, he's he's just content with one Stalker. He hasn't that, seen it. Yeah, that uh, Twilight Council is likely to be scouted if the Reaper commits. Yeah, and there's that Blink. So once again, and it might not be at all in this time. I, I dare say it wouldn't be. We do see uh, Blink Stalkers being added on this map uh, very, very often because kind of keeps Terran in their base. There's a lot of ways for the Blink Stalkers to get in, which uh, puts them on the defensive and gives a little bit more breathing room for Protoss. All right, here we go. You can't blink up, or you can't there's reaper no, up that there's way. There's no dimple there, mate. Nope, but he's, he's going on up. In. Look at that delayed reaper. Uh, he sees Works everything. out really well for him here, and he could get out, get out in the pop chin. on the lip, on the lip. Oh, and he gets out. But oh, motion core. core. Ooh. One more will do it. Oh, we went the oh other my side. Goodness. We even heard the attack sound go yeah. light off there for a second, but he couldn't. Very get it. close. That mothership core did get a SCV kill earlier. Just to point that one out. It's a little victory there, and we are seeing Stim plus three racks of bio being added. With the uh, Robo, let's keep a close eye on how many gates, because we might see that phase two Blink Stalker attack if things go poorly with the first pressure. <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder if we actually would see uh, Classic go for it on, in this kind of uh, this kind of map, in this kind of situation. He could play a straight up game. He could go to the three base, go for that close eye late mid game sort of style, or you know he, he doesn't have to risk it all. So if you look at the mini-map now, a really great place to do a Stalker Ooh. attack. Hold that thought, he gets the bay. Nothing I say matters anymore about <laughs> the Stalker attacks. Oh, I'm sorry, Wolf. But um, he did get that uh, that probe that was obviously going to be putting in some very, very valuable pylons on the map, which is going to really help out with this uh, these Stalker harassment. Let's see how much Cured commits to the defense, because he knows he killed that probe, so he's probably thinking, ah, I'm, I'm probably doing okay. Look at the scan. Sees the Mothership Core, actually, in the natural. And that lets him know, okay, this is not an all in. Because otherwise, he doesn't have any vision. Scan does not reveal the bay. But I like this choice by Classic. Make your opponent think blink, then rush out the bay. But Cure with some good scouting information here knows not to worry. Oh, look at this. Just totally isolating and zoning out that Reaper so he can't get any more information about whether there's a third base up. He knows nothing. Ooh, okay. Warp Prism DTs again. I mean, it, why not? It worked for him so well in the, uh, in the previous game. Yep. On Overgrowth. Oops. Misclick there. Want to lift those up? Uh, no, he wants Widow Mines. Yeah, he wants Widow Mine drop. He changed his mind at the last second. Not a bad idea either. Uh, Widow Mines obviously do very, very well on this map. Dropping in general does very well on this map, considering how exposed that natural is facing towards the middle of the map. This Blink Stalker play isn't going to find much, unfortunately. There's simply too much bio. Yeah, he can pick off a few units before combat shields are done. Marines die so quickly to this to just keep Blink back, the weakened Stalkers. If you could force a stim there too, it's amazing because then you can escape and your opponent just basically a bunch of oh. AoE damage to himself. Observer sees all. Absolutely everything. He saw the Widow Mines go into the uh, medivac. He should be completely prepared for it. We already see cannons at the natural and main base as well. Those two observers are placed so, so well. He knows how much the army is committing, how much it's moving out with. He knows exactly when drops are leaving. He knows what the medivac count is if he's checking. Picks off a Marauder this time and gets away. And we do see that Warp Prism that's going to be warping in DTs. There's a, at the natural, a turret. In the main base, I'm not so sure if he's got anything there. He's going to have to warp the DTs in first. Let's see how many he commits to. Well, if uh, if we see Cure react a little too late, I mean, the DTs, if there's more than one, can just right-click down that, uh, that turret. Oh, certainly. Okay, so one going for the natural and or chasing these reinforcements. No turret in the main base. And the turret at the natural actually isn't that well placed. Yeah. Okay, he's going to send one in first just to see if there's a turret at all. And so many of these SCVs going to go down. Oh, yeah, this is huge. He had no idea this was coming at all. 
Same time though, we do see pressure being applied. That Colossi that actually is so exposed here. Really he needs to pull bad. back. Decent force fields to try to keep him alive. But he doesn't have any zealots to tank. This bio force is way too big. And Classic dropping its supply rapidly here. He needs a DTs for the defense. There's one. And he's going to just go up here and target the Robo. I love this <laughs> choice. Pull back, kite that zealot away. And probably just going to leave. You think he has to because that DT is going to force him back. No doubt he has spent a lot of scans. Ten kills, by the way, meanwhile, with these DTs. Yeah, I mean, he had to spend a lot of scans in that main base, I think, to get rid of the DTs. Well, simply, he used mules too much and was not uh, paying attention. So, still, uh, Classic going to hold on for now. Classic actually showing us the power of DTs in this matchup as more than just a harassment unit, but a utility unit. He's definitely found the weakness in uh, Cure's defense, and that is DTs. Because DTs force scans to be used at home, and if you're using scans at home, you don't have scans to continue your attack. Ideally, you wouldn't want to scan while you're attacking anyways, because it makes your attack that's pretty tough to, to execute anyways expensive. You're costing money while you're trying to force your units in there on top of those Colossi, but he's really just pulled Cure apart, like you said, kind of found a weakness in him in these DTs. Takes an 11 supply lead in workers. And upgrades are coming out here now, getting that charge. Replacing his robotics is a bit expensive, a bit annoying. Mm. He's going to be Colossus Light for quite some time Very here. Very long time, which is going to definitely open the window for Kira to come down again and apply more pressure. I mean, with that Colossi, what are you going to do? Like, Bio are going to kite you for days. You don't have any uh, high Templar on the map. You don't have any Archons. And this no allows splash. your opponent to get an incredible medevac count because he doesn't need Vikings. So... Already we have eight medevacs here. Not having to worry about Vikings at all. So much healing power. Only now restarts Viking production. So really well played taking advantage of uh, picking off those Colossi and that Robo earlier. One Zealot to the Nat. <laughs> <laughs> it's enough to completely disrupt it, so I, I don't blame him at all for doing it. He's got to be careful with this War Prison in the main base. And yep. There's Charge. that one Zealot. Charge not done yet would have made it a little bit easier to try to do this, but he gets a kill and a bit more zealots warped in. If he kills that turret, can oh, actually go for so DTs. Nice. Yeah, he is in complete control with this wolf prism, just buying him so much time, so much space, and now you know these zealots are actually a true threat. You have to pull so much buyer into the main base, yep. and he can write down ICVs just like this. Look at how many ICVs actually been able to kill six so far. Perhaps even some more. Targets down the turret instead. Oh, doesn't quite get it. it might burn. It's gonna burn. A few more SVs could down 10. Can he get 11? Oh, yeah, I think he can. that medevac is healing it. Oh, oh. lost control. But still, 10, 10 SCV kills and all the time he bought. Like all the that space. Oh. All the space in the world. 20 yeah. supply up now. Great pounds around the map. Four run buys as well as pressure. War Prism, once again. I mean, Classic has pure momentum on this in this game. Uh, it's, it's normally the other way around where you see Terran applying drops everywhere, constantly keeping the rhythm, come, uh, the momentum, and... And it's the Terran that are building up that massive army with uh, <laughs> that last drop on the low ground. But building up a momentum and getting the the Viking counts he needs and going into whatever he wants. A completely sort of opposite situation. Oh man, look at this. Getting these Marines before the bunker is ready. Another one at the natural here. And so many SCVs killed in the main yet again. He just has bought so much tempo, arguably, with this. And all the Chrono Boost he's used on those upgrades is going to start to pay off here in just a second. It looks like, you know, if you look at this at first glance, you might think, well, I think this might be an overcommitment. I don't know if you really should be throwing those minerals away. Every second he can buy to continue Chrono Boosting those upgrades out, to get Storm out, to get that massive late game Protoss death ball is absolutely worth it. He doesn't want to throw too many Zealots away, but this, this tempo that he's gained here is so nice. And even going to open up a new pathway for Zealot Harassment by ground, so he doesn't have to use that Warp Prism as much. And a fourth base to boot. We do see four Vikings being made at a time. But Storm is on the way, so he will need more than just that to kind of deal with this composition. He knows this is the DT going to work here. Here's that swipe. So that's another scan used up. True, every scan really counts. All right, a ton of High Templar have built up energy before Storm is even ready. This isn't, okay, Storm's done, let me warp up my High Templar now. It's my High Templar almost have enough for two Storms already as soon as Storm is done. So this timing... That he's going to hit right here before Ghosts are ready with a ton of High Templar is really, really difficult to defend. A ton of Vikings, so Colossi are not going to be easily utilized, but he needs to be careful. He needs to be ready to dodge those storms. Yeah, well, I mean, we we, we saw Kira in the last games not dodge anything with those Vikings. They will eat every single storm. Oh, this DT is just lurking around, man. Yeah. Oh, so much damage done. Fantastic DT work from Classic. 
Another scan used up before any fight has begun. I guarantee you, after this series, win or lose, Cure is going to be having some talks with his teammates about DT defense. Yeah, he really wants to get rid of this Viking. There we go. Another Viking down. Some pretty awkward positions there. And more and more Vikings being added, but there are High Templar. And I don't think we see any ghosts so far. No, we do not. Nope. I mean, he's got he's got to have like eight storms at least right now on the map. Six High Templar, so I think he's got about ten. Easier stormed than, than set, I, or rather easier said than stormed. Uh, oftentimes, though, if you have your High Templar get sniped or, you know, they get clumped up and you hit an EMP, but with no ghosts... No good. And look at this, just sends a small group of units forward because he knows he doesn't want to send that whole bio into the storms. That is that is so many Marauders already going down before anything begins. Nice hallucination. Not the first time we've seen him do that in this series. Also, I really like that. Okay, first High Templar leading the charge, forcing that army back, zoning it out. Another storm right on those Vikings. Ooh, very on point with the Blink Stalkers. Maybe just not enough Blink Stalkers, though, to really uh, help completely zone out these uh, Vikings. Yeah, he might actually have to trade some of his Zealots out before he can really commit to an engagement because... Uh, he just doesn't have any free supply here. And with no free supply, he also can't drop. So he's kind of a sitting duck here uh, in, a, in a bit of uh, ways. But he's going to add these cannons here instead of um, knowing he can rely on warp ins because he's got no units he can warp in. He needs cannons. It's the only line of defense he's going to have here. Yeah, he actually might want to attack. I think he was in a pretty good po position to attack, but now he's, he's kind of given Cure enough time to get those ghosts out. 3-3 three, three on the way as well. Five more ghosts going to pop out here in just a second, too. This High Templar, not enough energy for a Storm, but the second one does. And oh. look at that from the left side. Storm's raining on this army. Those Vikings still eating so much damage from those Storms right now. But does he have enough range damage to follow this up? I don't know about chasing this. He's taking so much damage on his Colossi. Still, this is not a, really enough fire. Oh, but a great EMP. We'll change this pretty quickly. And the upgrades here about to finish right now for Classic. If he could just get those reinforcements up with the upgrades, this should actually seal the deal. It's just a lot of healing power in these medevacs as well. More and more EMPs going down, especially on those Archons. It's actually such a tight battle here. The Ghosts do so much bonus damage to Light, and he holds it on. Yeah, complete overcommitment there from Classic. Down 40 supply now. He, he, he just he, he pretty much attack moves with those uh, Zealots into uh, EMP and a lot of bio with a lot of medivac. Very, very cost inefficient. He is ahead, but he's not that ahead. Looks like a bit of panic because of what was happening to his third base. And Moonglade, uh, something has been pointed out to us right now. I didn't even realize this whole time. There's no Colossus range. And no Colossus range the entire time. <laughs> no wonder that fight seemed to oh. look so weird with the Vikings. Because I was like, he's really committed to those Colossi. Okay. Don't know, about, don't know about that. Yeah, no range. Yeah, we should have should have really been on top of that one. Yeah, well, <laughs> That's that a was, big mistake. Looks like the Korean commentators just noticed as well. It's a something you just accept to be there no matter what. You don't even think about it, the potential of it not being there. And it looks like Classic is just now realizing. I feel like with range, that would have been a lot more of a successful attack. Mm. Oh, is he going to force out another scan? The more he does this, I mean... He already has the uh, the economy advantage. Only that fourth going down now. Granted, it is turning into a planetary, which is... Uh, if Classic really wants to press the issue, now would be the time. I think attacking the natural and trying to cut off reinforcements might be a good idea. Go behind the rocks. Go over there. Avoid the planetary altogether. Mm -hmm. I feel like they, like, Fury can just sit up here forever, no matter where the Protoss is going to come from, and eventually kite back to the planetary every time. It's a, it's a great forward position. That's why Terrans almost always take this as their fourth base. Well, the more time that goes by, you can see the upgrades for the Terran are catching up. Plus three armor, nearly complete. Plus two. Four Vikings also catching up. Yeah. Bit of an overstep with this bio, but he wants to bait into that planetary. Yeah, now he knows for sure there is Colossus range. <laughs> uh, three. I think he might actually still have enough to just crush the planetary, to be honest. Let's see. He's got a lot of storms. Not that much burst damage, though. Oh, he sees it and changes his mind, but great storms. Decent EMPs as well. Just going to make those into Archons. Not confident to engage here. High oh. ground Vikings, 13-4, mm. to four, and no burst damage for the planetary. I'd be concerned about going up against that. Oh, this is very, very smart. You can pick off a lot of these. Very open position. Classic not paying attention either. He's utilizing the terrain against his opponent yet again. This Still, is a very close game. Look at the stalker count as well. It's, it is pretty low. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, he gets him too. The naked. Beautiful. High or rather, Dark Templar over there. Stalker count is so low that you know, I feel like the, the Vikings can just kind of tank the shots and go for the Colossi again, like they did in the last fight. 
And here we go. But that is so many. So, so many uh, zealots. Yeah, he has 32 zealots, man. All right, four storms right here. Let's see if we can get them all off. One, two. And the EMP hits. Scan goes down. Ooh, see, this is an awkward position. Yeah, see, now the Vikings are going to try to use this terrain again. Right underneath the structure to the right side. A few more storms coming in, though. Blink forward. Very committed here with those stalkers. He has to pull back. Zealots are just doing the best job they can here to tank, but it's hard for them to actually fight and do damage. Looping around that ramp, where Cure just heads again, where he's cutting back to that planetary fortress, just like you were saying before. Yeah, one Archon for free. A little bit of a mistake there. Classic. Notice the bank for Classic. He's, yeah, it's not as big as he would hope, I'm sure. He's still building it. He is maxed out. He has been maxed out for a while, making that fifth base in the mid. He's going to start adding some gates soon, I feel. Yeah. Hasn't found a way in. With all the gas he has, he can make so many Archons. Look at that uh, army's cost. He can make that so much more expensive by removing the Zealots and making Archons instead. Uh, Stalker's really caught out. Another kind of wonky position for Classic. He's just not finding what he needs. And now he's getting bullied back, and now two more Archons go down. Yeah, Classic is being outmaneuvered here by Cure. Completely. Again. Oh, big, big Ooh. mistake. Very, very costly. That is like... 1,200 gas that has been thrown away for nothing in the last, like, two minutes. He has no Archons left on the map. Ten High Templar, yes, but wants those for Storms. A ton of cannons being added. Wouldn't be surprised if we see a nuke added by Cure pretty soon to help defend, or rather, uh, deal with these defenses. EMP is going off on everything here. I like that. He's got enough ghosts so he can just EMP every single DT that comes out now. That Warp Prism gets deterred. Warp Prism speed actually just finishing. And that means that he can do a lot more with that. Ghost count is getting pretty high, too. It's, what, 10, 12 at this point? So oh, he can so blank and EMP is 13. Looks like he was going for a Storm Drop. Yeah, I mean, I like that at this point with all the High Templar he's got available. They're not all going to be useful in a fight because they clump up. Mm. You know, they can't all just get those uh, Storms off. Ooh. Okay, he let's see. Everything. Okay, some warning Storms here saying get back. <laughs> Warning storms. Well, he's just yeah. saying, do not engage this. Don't army. you dare! But well, these these are super exposed ghosts. So yes, we are, are finally going to see classic oh, ghosts. Oh, and that storm drop coming in from the right side, and all of those Vikings eating storm damage. Can the Colossi tank enough? It looks like the answer is yes. Oh, bad storms and those zealots. That's yeah. so much damage. And the Marauders actually kind of turtling up here so those zealots can't get that full surface area but still this looks like way too much protoss damage here moonglade it does another blink forward those stalkers doing that extra bonus damage to armor now he just needs a few more warp of high templar and with all the vikings dead he goes straight into double colossus production here off of his two robos look at this three extra starports because he knows he's going to need it to spend that bank to deal with the colossus follow-up seven vikings at a time he has no money left though and classic has a ton of money left and 650 gas to boot He's going to apply pressure now. He looks like he's going to try and break down the fifth base, and I think he, he will He can burst it down this time. He's got way too much damage. Planter is not even ready. Outmaneuvered this time is Cure, actually, for one of the first times in this game. Part of the problem being his army is just too small. It's not well equipped to deal with 13 High Templar. And, of course, those Colossi at the back, soon to be four Colossi, with five and six already queued up on the way. DT's finally finished off those rocks, which opens up another pathway for Zealots to get into the main base. 40 supply lead for Classic. I think he just really is trying to find a way in at this point to finish things off. He has to try and get through that uh, planetary, which is going to be so difficult. Nice harass here. He's not going to clean everything up. But here we go now. He's going to go in for the planetary. Oh, I don't know if he's got enough burst damage there. Oh, just not enough. What happens sometimes when you have this situation? Oh, is he going to get that turret? That's so nice if he gets that uh, central tower. But sometimes what happens here is you can get a mass amount of SCV kills while the repair is going on. That's what I was thinking. I think, like, if he zoned out enough with Storm, he could do it. Like, Storm on the bio while he storms the SCVs, right clicks it down, then retreats. But obviously, if he takes too much damage, there will be quite a large counterattack from Cure to try and just win the game. Yeah. I mean, he's only got 11 Stalkers and 6 Colossi to do, like, range damage to that planetary itself. So all that damage is missed uh, from the fight, especially on those Colossi if you right-click on the planetary. So it's really tough to actually make that decision unless you get those storms off on the SCVs. Okay. This is much better. He yeah. can actually commit to this if he wants to. Good EMPs, though, zone him out, and he holds this position. He this even is just going into the uh, planetary now would be not a bad idea considering where he's the I think that's what he's going to do? Yep. If he gets the storms off on the SCVs, he can kill it's this damage. It's damage from earlier, too. 
He's going to try to burst it down, and there it goes. But he does eat some damage from the Vikings, so I think it was well worth it. Completely worth it. Only losing, uh, what was it, one Colossi? Yeah. And look at this. That run by potential. And every single tech lab that he kills here means less ghosts for reinforcements, less marauders. If suddenly you're struck, stuck in a position where you can only make marines because you're desperate, you've lost too many tech labs and you need units ASAP, then you're in a lot of trouble. Look at this. Four marines at a time coming out here with a few ghosts. The army is getting weaker. Marines are terrible in this late game comp against tons of storms. All that AOE damage, Marines fall like flies, fall like Zerglings, to put it in your perspective, Moonblade. <laughs> they do indeed, Wolf. They do indeed. Enough fire here to defend any more counterattacks, but it looks like Classic's going to go behind the mineral patch and kind of just destroy every SCV. But he's going to be very careful because the Vikings will have a great vantage point to just lay waste if he chooses to. I think Cure didn't react quickly enough to actually use those Vikings the way he wanted to, like you were talking about, because now he's got enough time to escape. Ooh, ooh. If he could get too high tempo with three Marines, that would have been nice, but it doesn't happen. So many turrets in this turret ring, actually. Warp Prism's going to go down. Look at this. He's going for the fight. He has to just try and destroy this army to kind of claw his way back into the game, give him some breathing room. It's basically Ring Around the rosy here. Classic Force of the Terran army out. Does a big warp in the Zealots. The army is getting will down. Notice all these units are so low from before. And he didn't even, those didn't even attack right away. Yeah, Had they, they were done, it would have done even more damage. They were like huge to attack. So. Exactly. A lot of ghosts though in the, uh, in the main base. But he's just getting whittled down at every turn with a weak economy. And Classic with total map control here. Every base on the map belongs to him. That base to the left side, he might even think about taking that pretty soon because we give him a good vantage point to continue doing these zealot harassments and to be able to mine from an additional base. He has almost 3,000 minerals and almost 2,000 gas banked up right now. As I'm saying it, it does go over that mark. Still DTs for defense, forcing scans to be used as he's attacking. Ooh, nice DMPs, but not getting a kill for it. Oh! oh 32. 32! Damn, very nicely done. Classic's in complete control. Classic is really not only willing down the army and the economy of Cure, but I feel his patience as well. He just lost the full medi back Look at as all well. the scans he has to keep using for all these DTs because he's lost all of his turrets. He can't afford to be using scans when he just lost 33 SCVs to harassment. No way. It's such a bad position. It's, it's all about Classic just finding that way to, to, to deal the, the finishing blow efficiently to avoid any sort of uh, prolonged game, any sort of way Cure could come back. It's That's why like, he is being so careful, because it is kind of a hard map to attack on at this point. The Psionic Storm Colossus ball on one side of the map with Archon support versus Zealot harassment that's streaming into the main. <laughs> it's almost like making a planetary at his natural wouldn't even be a bad choice at this point. I think it would do him a lot of good. He's making a Raven. This is something I, I jokingly talked about in one of our previous games because the DTs were such a problem, but I think it's actually worth it at this point with some of that extra gas. Not a bad idea. We are seeing a lot of EMPs, but they are stalkers. They will not go down that easily unless they need, there's Marauders. They need follow-ups to those EMPs to actually kill this Protoss army off. He's now down to 28 SCBs. Yeah, that was another 15. He has, His economy is in shambles at this point. He is fully saturated at this uh, fourth base, but still. It's almost mined out. Yeah. And look at all the bank. He's just being so much more efficient. I want to see that unit's lost tab, actually. That's what I really want to see, man. I would actually paint a picture of how much destruction this Protoss has done. You can almost see it by just looking at the bank, but we'd add a, a bitter, bigger amount of depth to where we're at in this game. Cure is trying to hope for a miracle engagement, but I just don't think it's going to happen. Well, it's not too bad. He got one Colossi off, but he is trading Vikings for it and a lot of HP. And it's hard for him to trade like that because and he doesn't look, have the economy to replace Finally, them. he's been whittled down enough at that fourth base that Zealots have overrun it at this point. And now Zealots go towards the fifth as well. He's, he's spread too thin. Got two Ravens over there just sitting pretty. So much money invested into that, but we've moved beyond the DT phase of this game. 14 high tempo on the map, five Colossi that can be replaced two at a time at any time because he has essentially unlimited money at this almost 40 minute mark in this final game. He did see where those Vikings were as well, so he turns his Colossi around. Stops a little mining at that fifth base. Now another ton of Zealots going into a much weaker bio force. Everything just gets weaker and weaker. It's smaller and smaller here. I think he it doesn't it, have any. Yeah, he doesn't have any money to replace it. It's, it's essentially to a point where he GGs out. I think like he's just waiting for the GG because there's nothing he can do. This can go on forever. Essentially, Classic has complete control of the game. Just he's even getting rid up, of medivacs. Yeah, blowing up medivacs with feedbacks here. 
And I think we're going to see him type out oh, in just a second. So much damage. Vikings need to land if they want to change this fight. <laughs> EMP was so cute. I think he actually hit his own Ravens with it. He probably did. <laughs> and now they're all bunching up and making a nice Viking cloud for the Archons. And, and down it goes. GG. Look at Classic's face as he smirks. Finally. This is actually a big moment in Classic, Classic's career, too, in my opinion, because normally Classic is the type of player, if he goes 0-2, he's going 0-3. Yeah. But he turns this series around. Very, very good reactionary play. Totally adapting to Cure's style. I was really impressed. Yeah, there was some fantastic games overall. A great series as the second series of the SSL. And, uh, yeah, good to see Classic, you know, playing a little bit more of the Classic we saw a few months ago. Yeah. He has been having a lot of trouble against Terran these days. Uh, still pulls it back to make it to the next round of the SSL. Cure man, nearly a GSL finalist, just one game away. Just one game away of going to that dual tournament of the Star League, but he's not able to do it. And gets shut down. So we're going to go right to an interview here with our winner, Classic. <laughs> How does it feel to move on to the round of 16? So there was going to be a difficult match. I really wanted to win the first set. Well, I lost the first two sets and I was actually suffering, suffering mentally. So he has the experience to actually, you know, come back from such a loss. And he trusted in himself and kept trying his hardest. And he's actually still kind of uh, in shock that he was able to win. He can't believe it, but he's very happy with today's results. Kyr is a very good player, and it's really tough to play against Terrence these days. But they prepared really well for this match. So I'm happy that I was able to take the match 3-2. It was a really close match. In the final set, you actually didn't upgrade your Colossus range. Was it because you were nervous? I was actually a little bit nervous. Uh, and I was really focused on other things. And before, uh, I didn't know that I didn't have the upgrade. I thought I was actually going to win the game, which was evident in his attack there. Uh, but it took me a little bit longer to win, but it didn't change the results. So basically what he's saying is he hasn't actually performed very well recently and he wasn't actually feeling very confident in himself. But he's practicing really hard, he's doing better and better, he's getting better results. So he thinks that this could be a great season for him to turn things around and get some good results going forward. I made a few mistakes today, so I'm definitely not going to be cocky about today's win. And I'm going to work harder, practice harder, and try to show even better performances So asking for a round of applause here one more time to congratulate Classic on his win. So that was a pretty fiery series we saw there, Moonglade. That was a very close series. It could have gone either way for sure. But, uh, I'm kind of glad that Classic made it through, to be honest. He's, he's always he's been the better performing Protoss all year, a uh, better performing player all year. So uh, it's, it's great to see him once again deep into a tournament. Absolutely. Well, guys, we've got another TVP. We've got Terminator versus Taja coming up after this break. So tell your friends. We'll be right back.